Good morning. This week we're talking about mourning and grief. What do our feelings say to us? What are they doing inside of us? So today we're going to talk about bargaining and blame because they come together. Bargaining is the whole idea of, you know, why me? Why now? Why this issue? Blame is looking for someone to actually put the blame upon. It's your fault. This is why this has happened. These things are going on to me because of. But actually, both of them are trying to get to one simple thing, and that is the question, why? Why is this happening? Why do I feel this way? How come these things are going on in my life right now? This is not what I signed up for. These are not the things that I'm looking for in my life. Yet, there they are. And so we bargain. We bargain with God. We bargain with anybody. We blame. We point our finger, trying to say, this isn't the thing here. Because in times like these, we want to know the answer why. Our reality now makes this a real issue for us. And so we have to understand our why. Well, what's the reason here? Well, first of all, we are suffering from a COVID-19 virus. It has caused us to shelter in place for almost 11 weeks. That has created a lot of fear. And many people go, oh, I'm not afraid. Yes, you are. Because there's those fears that just kind of sneak upon us. Now, we're not afraid of someone beating us up, but yes, we are. There's, of course, the fear of sickness. The fear of not being able to have a vaccine. The fear of not being able to get well. That then, of course, leads to the fear of death. Am I going to die from this? Is someone I know going to die from this? Then, of course, there's a whole fear of the loss of income. So many people are unemployed. Restaurants are closed. Only essential workers seem to be working. People don't have enough money. Yet our stock market keeps going up. That's a, different, that's a whole different conversation. But our unemployment rate has skyrocketed because of fear of loss of income. And then there's a new one, food insecurity, which is the whole idea of, is there going to be enough food? Remember when this first started, there was a run on toilet paper. There was a run on cleaning, cleaning supplies. There was a run on paper towels. There was a run to clean out the grocery stores for the zombie apocalypse. One friend of mine ordered 78 days of pre-packaged food. Why? Because we're afraid. Fear lives there. Then, of course, there's an the issue of the fear of isolation. I'm isolated from my loved ones. I can't see my children, my grandchildren. We must talk at a distance. I can't see my friends. I can't do the ministry I want to do. All of these things come, so we're looking for blame. Why is this often? There is no answer to why. Often, the answer is more, is God teaching me something? Is there something I need to be paying attention to here? Because what we really want to do at that point is just blame God. Because it's all his fault. He did this. Why did he do this? Understand, God allows it to rain on, on the good and the bad alike. And yes, we're all his children, but what do I do here when I want to blame God, when I want to stick my finger in his face and tell God how angry I am with him? Well, the first thing is you tell God how angry you are with him. If you ever read the Psalms, you know that the Psalms are nothing more than the Hebrews singing the blues. And they're telling God, God, this is wrong, this is wrong. The whole idea of lament. C.S. Lewis helps us here. He says, I went... You know, I'm in grief. I go to the Father. I don't know. Sometimes it feels like the door's been shut in my face. I'm in pain now. It's easy to go with God when things are great. Oh, God, everything's fun, happy, go lucky. But then, as C.S. Lewis says in that grief observed, he says, sometimes it just feels like there's nothing there. God is silent. Well, I guarantee you, God is never silent. Sometimes it's hard for us to hear because of our own angst, our own fear, our own blame, our own bargaining. Think in your own life, those times when you said, when you played the three-year-old, I'll be your best friend if you do this. 
And so when we go to God sometimes in bargaining, and God says, I don't need to bargain. I love you. I'm going to provide for you just as I do everyone else. So when we're in this kind of mourning, this kind of pain, we have to also sometimes go to Job. Here's what Job says. Job says, Oh, that my grief were actually weighed out and laid out in balances together for my calamity. For then it would be heavier than all of the sand on the sea. Therefore, my, my wounds would be a rash. Arrows that the Almighty has slain me with. The poison is inside of me. What's he doing here? He's trying to say, God, I'm in pain without blaming God. The key to understanding Job and his grief is this. He trusts God. Yes, this is painful. Yes, these things are here. Yes, God, I want to blame you. Yes, I want to get this over with. But the Father says, no, trust me. Because you're not alone in this. Because when we start blaming, when we start bargaining, we feel as though we're alone. The Father says, no, you're not alone in this. The Father says in 1 Peter 5, he says, the Spirit be of sober spirit, know that I am with you. The adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, but draw near to me, because the God of all grace, who's called you to his eternal glory, is with you, will perfect, confirm, and strengthen you. You hear those three words? Perfect you. Confirm you. Strengthen you. Because we all need that right now. To be strengthened, to can be confirmed, to be confirmed in this context is the idea that you're okay. Yes, you're fearful. God says, I understand your fear. I walk through this with you. God says, I understand you want to bargain. Don't bargain. I have my best intentions for you. So where is God when I hurt this much? Job says, Though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust him. Peter says, draw near to the Father. He'll draw near to you. Resist the devil, full of your faith. Why? Because the Father is going to perfect, strengthen, and confirm you. Because the enemy wants you to feel isolated, alone, by yourself. The Father says, no, I am with you. So, in these days when you want to bargain, these days when you want to blame, Go to the Father. And again, trust the Father's heart. Where's God when you heard like this? Remember Psalm 23. God goes ahead of you. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He is our shepherd, the one who leads the way. In my anger, in my frustration, in my fear, in my blame, in my questioning, am I willing to follow? The Father. And then he stands beside you. His presence. As Psalm 23 again. His rod, his staff, they comfort me. That's the Father's presence. The Father's guidance. The Father's discipline. The Father's putting his arm around us. And then God promises not to fail. Hebrews 13.5. Why? Because he is there, a very present reality for us. We depend upon him. Verse 2 to 6 in Psalm, in Psalm, Psalm 23. The Father speaks there. Then there's this wonderful verse from Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 8. Because when I want to bargain with God, when I want to blame God, when my fears begin to overwhelm me, this verse comes to mind. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Let me say it once more. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Deuteronomy 31.8 Father, we are fearful. We're full of angst. We're full of anxiety. We want to bargain. We want to get out of this. Lord, help us to be still before you and not to be fearful, but to know your care, your touch in our lives this day. 
So, Father, we know that you have our best intentions at heart. So, Father, help us to realize that and walk there with you because you promise never to leave us nor forsake us, but to carry us as you do gentle lambs. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.